You guys all ready to go? Yeah. All right. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to uh, order. We figured since it's the 20s outside, we should balance that with having it at least 90 degrees in here. It's fantastic. Remind ourselves of summer and all the good things at our parks during the summer. So. Very good. So with that uh, first order of business, we're going to ask for uh, uh, approval of the minutes. Seven approval. All right. It's been a motion and a second. second. Uh, there you go. All those in favor, say five by saying aye. 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 All right, very good. Minutes are approved. On to the next order of business, uh, resolution number 29948. Yes, commissioners, this is consideration of an agreement uh, with AEG Live for the production of the uh, Rockfest event for 2013. Uh, you have a memo in your packet from Shannon Dooley, and I know we have a guest. And uh, Shannon is here to answer any questions, and I'm sure Larry can answer any questions you might have of him. <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Uh, annual event, one day, May 11th, Rockfest, over in Pin Valley Park. Um, everything went great last year. Uh, Larry Hilvick is here with representing AEG, if you guys have any additional questions. But I think um, a good time was had by all last year. <laughs> <laughs> and looking forward to another big, successful event. Great. Any questions of Larry? Larry, we'd love to always hear from you about the event. Um, it's success it's last year. Secret. Is it really? Yeah, it's, even though everyone knows, it's still, it's still top secret. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, what are the projections for attendance? Are they? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind coming up. Sure. sure. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, for the record, Larry Hovick. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> we always put it up on sale at, uh, I want to say, I don't have it right in front of me, I want to say 55. I want to say that. Um, we haven't in the last few years we haven't hit that mark uh, but we have been very close to 50 each year so it's been uh, it's it's a lot of work it's uh, it's been a, a good annual event uh, we have a great relationship with Maine Corps now and, and uh, the other surrounding neighborhoods so that has really been a, a benefit to us you're laughing uh, <laughs> the uh, we have uh, I mean it's it, it's Due to the one event a few years ago that had the lovely mud mud uh, at it, uh, we developed a neighborhood uh, program, and it's really been it's been beneficial to the event. So this year, we usually don't announce until sometime later in uh, February or March. It all depends on when we get all the acts lined up, and so that's yes, I, I was joking, but yes, it is kind of top secret yet. Yeah, very good. In terms of. Uh Attendance about how much of that comes from Kansas City? How much is outside of Kansas City? There's guess? actually quite a few people that come from out of town. Uh, we do one of the things that we do is a ticket package at uh, the the hotels that are right around there. Yep. So there's quite a bit of economic impact that comes out of that. So the hotels mm -hmm. benefit from it, so, and all, also all the restaurants around the area. So it's uh, we I don't know off the top of my head how many are from out of town, but it, it's 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 a pretty good number because we besides the station, it's it's you know it's kind of one of the big things that we've always tried to make sure is that it's an affordable event and it's the program director Bob Edwards has always said for a hundred dollars a family or two people essentially can go for a hundred dollars including tickets for the and spend the entire day and see 15 bands so that's one of the things that we've always strived for and been able to maintain over the years that, that falls in line with what the Arts Commission had done some projections on what uh, e economic am uh, impact uh, that various things happened in Kansas City is roughly $47 per person per day of economic impact for non-residents and about $20 per day of residents. So th it's a tremendous economic impact. We thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. Is there a motion to approve um, uh, the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mm -hmm. Motion seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. All right, very good. Resolution passes. Uh, resolution number 29949. Uh, yes, commissioners. Uh, another item that uh, Shannon Dooley is handling. 
is regarding a concession agreement, Hard America uh, Council of the Boy Scouts of America, for an event out at uh, Jerry Smith Park. Go ahead, Shannon. Uh, yes, Commissioners, the Boy Scouts would like to come out to Jerry Smith Park again. This will be their second annual, so the first annual was a great success. Jessica Dahl is here representing um, the Heart of America um, Council and Boy Scouts, and she's here if you have any questions. It's a week-long camp, but it's day camp, so. Okay. We'd love to hear from you. If, uh, just talk a little bit about the event itself and what you guys plan. That's great. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, do you have any questions or do you just want me to no just talk a little bit about it yeah, that's okay fine. Yeah. I can do that um, it'll be uh, about 600 people in attendance um, we'll have boys uh, ranging from second grade on up to fifth grade um, doing various uh, Cub Scouting activities that they have a blast doing um, the volunteers and the boys had a lot of fun last year doing uh, various activities um, crafts um, they do a lot of outdoor exercises uh, so they had a lot of fun and really enjoyed it and um, if you have any questions. Any questions? Uh, just Jerry Smith Park is a great natural setting for the, something, an activity like that. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've been involved in those things at, at various other parks over the years in the past. So uh, we really look forward to being able to support Boy Scouts with that type of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we thank you for using our park. Yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Anything else? No. no. Okay, very good. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Second. Mm. All right. So is there um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Resolution passes. Resolution number 29950. Uh, yes, commissioners. Uh, this is consideration of professional services agreement for a race coordinator for Kansas City. And uh, I'm going to let Heidi uh, give you a little background on this and then uh, introduce our guests. Great. I'm not sure how much background you need. I've been talking about this for months, yes. but um, and finally it's come to fruition. We have gone ahead and contracted with Ev Energy. Our upon your approval, we'll contract with Ev Energy a Marketing Group, who is well known in the community, has a really good reputation, um, a lot of experience in doing events and permitting within the city system, um, to go ahead and be our race coordinator. And they, in turn, have hired. Uh, the actual race coordinator herself, uh, Jenny Cronister. So I have David Stefano with Of Energy and Jenny Cronister with Of Energy here to talk a bit about what they plan to do. Um, as you know, we're making it a, we are now responsible parks and recreation for permitting all the races, no longer through public works, it's all through parks. And uh, we're going to make it kind of a one-stop shop here in Parks and Rec and make it very easy on the race coordinator and make the community very happy about being notified that there's races coming in front of them and just make Kansas City the place to come and race. I'd like to thank Shannon Dooley, of course, and Lana here for their help on getting this RFP and everything together. And uh, without further ado, here they are, our <laughs> new race coordinators. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. Hi. I'm David Stefano, and this is Jenny Cronister, and uh, we're excited to be a part of about a part of this process. Right. So um, we uh, we're excited uh, on a number of, of reasons. Number one is that we've done a tremendous number of events in the city, uh, and have worked uh, with different city departments on permitting uh, over the years with uh, such events as Water Fire and the Plaza Art Fair and Rhythm and Ribs and and uh, um, urban tour and n tremendous number of events uh, in the city environs. And I also live uh, in the city in, uh, in the Brookside area, 54th uh, Street area, and uh, have a lot of races that run through my neighborhood uh, quite a bit. So uh, when we had this opportunity, I was, uh, I was excited about uh, being able to provide input. Uh, our company provides event services. Uh, to major properties nationally as well as locally. Uh, we've been in business for uh, 13 years. Uh, Brandon Connolly is my partner, and uh, we manage uh, the Downtown Council and Economic Development Corporation's annual uh, luncheons and award ceremonies. Uh, we've, we've put on races before. Uh, we act as race director for a national uh, obstacle course tour called Ruckus and handle uh, permitting interaction with uh, public safety in multiple cities. Uh, as well as uh, emergency medical services, routing, uh, maps, uh, course maps, and so forth um, as well. And uh, we, we also do a lot of consulting with properties. How do, we, how do uh, sports and entertainment properties do their business better? 
And so we have a consultative approach. And uh, part of our first phase here is discovery. We're sitting down with everybody involved, all the stakeholders, to understand how they've worked with the, with the process so far and what, what their needs are so that we can understand what works well, what needs improvement on, uh, from their perspective. And, uh, and that means public works, public safety. That means the, uh, the uh, neighborhood associations we're going to talk to. Uh, in fact, Jenny's already reached out to a number of them as well as the race directors because uh, we also service them and want this to be a, a workable and efficient and effective process for them as well. Uh, and we're getting uh, very good feedback to start with. So we're going to take all this information and look at the existing program and process and uh, enhance it so that it meets everybody's needs. Um, the residents and businesses so that they're informed of what's going on. There's easy access to information uh, when races are coming and, and set the guidelines for the race director so that they understand what our objectives are and when they need to do certain things in terms of the permitting process, the noise reduction plan, the traffic <coughs> control plan, the public notification plan, and really uh, streamline those types of things and make them easily accessible so that it's an easy process for them. We, we want this to be the best city in the country for holding an event uh, races, uh, but it also has to address all the different stakeholders that are impacted. And uh, one of the great things about, uh, about finding Jenny um, is that she's a runner, and she, le she participates in probably half these races already and uh, has relationships with all the race directors already. Very good. Give a little background on yeah. yourself. Yeah, I've, I mean, I'm a, I'm a personal trainer here in town, and so I've, I've kind of started to make relationships with a lot of the race directors in town because you know, I, on the other side of not being able to get out of your neighborhood, it drives me absolutely crazy that there's no spectator support at all. And that, I've, I've run Chicago, I've run New York, you know, Kansas City should be that, that scale. Because we've got, our races are harder, they're more beautiful, and it's less expensive to get here. So we should have 47,000 people running those marathons, and it should go swimmingly, and we should be five deep on the streets and things like that. It's a place of pride for me. You know, I want my city to be the one, so. Thank you very That's why much. we're excited. Any, any <laughs> questions at this time? So logistically, like if somebody wants to do a race, are they calling your office? Or are they calling can Are they calling all us? Or what? What's what? They're how's contacting this me. Okay. So. With energy. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So the permit, uh, all the permits will will reside with us. We'll provide them with the permits. The money they'll will pay their permitting fee through us. We'll remit those to the parks department. Um, the guidelines that we. Uh, we'll put up regarding timeline, when they're supposed to do certain things, uh, when they're supposed to provide their plans, uh, will all reside with us and we'll work with them to make sh with oversight to make sure they're doing things uh, on time and provide them feedback on how, how they did once the race moves forward. The, the okay. real advantage then is that it's not going to be somebody in the city's additional duty mm -mm. to organize it. That's it, right. it will be your primary duty, which will make it. Mm -hmm. Work and I'll be with putting my hands on the routes. Yeah. Right. So, my feet on the routes mm. and my car. <laughs> Do we see a, a, an increase or decrease in terms of, of revenue from these races from years past? Does anybody know the answer to that? Do we have? It seems like there is a huge increase. I'm getting calls all the time. Um, especially the national outfits and even local nonprofits. Oh, let's raise some money. Let's have a 5K walk. So um, Kansas City is getting inundated. I am so happy to have mm -hmm. Venergy on staff to help. And I think this is going to be a great opportunity for one-stop shop. So some, you know, I get coordinators who don't really know what they're doing um, and they need a lot of help. Jenny's going to have that time to hopefully help them. Very good. Great. Thank you. Might be worth mentioning uh, Councilman Jan Markison and mm -hmm. all this too, Heidi. I know she was instrumental in kind of getting to this point. Yeah, Councilman Markison spearheaded this whole um, mm -hmm. deal <laughs> in hiring a coordinator, coordinator, and she's been involved. This has been almost a year-long process right. now in trying to get this to come to fruition. I'd also like to add, it's not just running races; it is walks, and it is um, bike rides, any mobile street-based event. 
um, that they will be coordinating and permitting, right. yeah, other I mean, than not parades. You mentioned, too, is the 45K that's in here is mm -hmm. coming from the city the manager's office. Convention budget, I believe, is called. Yes. So it's kind of a tourism fund is what I guess I might classify that as. So that's the funding for this because it is a citywide function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, yeah, well, again, in the potential for additional revenues to the city by increased participation, yeah. those uh, figures that I mentioned earlier per person per day yeah. are, are extremely beneficial to the city and to us. I would agree. Is there a motion to uh, approve uh, the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion seconded? Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The resolution passes. Resolution number 29951. Uh, yes, commissioners, uh, this item deals with the Liberty Memorial um, in the endowment fund, uh, which ties into uh, a variety of improvements that need to take place uh, at the memorial. There's a memo in your packet from uh, Travis Kiefer that uh, highlights some of those necessary repairs associated with the Liberty Memorial. And Travis is here, uh, along with uh, Jimmy Lossing, who is our project manager for the Liberty Memorial. I know this was brought to the Liberty Memorial Building and Grounds Committee last week, and they reviewed these documents. And uh, of course, been working with Lon and her office. Uh, this has a resolution, and it also has an ordinance within the packet in front of you. And we'd recommend approval. And if you have any questions, uh, Travis or Jimmy or Lana are here. Right. Any questions? I would uh, I would comment that uh, these are necessary uh, enhancements and improvements to the memorial. Mm -hmm for the protection of its assets, uh, the cooling towers in particular. Uh, with the uh, memorial having been designated as the National World War I Memorial and uh, being the headquarters for the centennial celebration, which is coming up, uh, we need to put our best foot forward. And this expenditure of funds is headed in exactly that direction. Uh, these are there are other things that need to be done uh, but these items have been prioritized for the uh, benefit of the assets and for the outward appearance and uh, maintenance of the memorial for that celebration uh, it's always difficult to take uh, that kind of funding out of the endowment but uh, it's a well worth the investment and it'll be money well spent i agree with that but i i, I just want to caution the liberty memorial and and just going forward that um we need to see more progress made in terms of it of it being in a profitable or at least not profitable but uh in a situation where they're not needing to come to dip into that endowment just because that means going forward their money is going to be less in terms of what they get yearly and um, I'm just concerned about that, although I do think it's necessary, and I think they're headed in the right direction, but uh, it, it, it's a concern. Very good. And the other comment that I would make that is several of the items came in under en engineer's estimates. Uh, so it's been well planned out, well thought out, and uh, like I say, I, I think it's something that is needed uh, for the city and the memorial to put its best foot forward because it is going to be an international celebration. And when a city can get that kind of international attention, I think it's money well spent. Okay. Is there a uh, motion to approve uh, the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. So motion is seconded. Any <coughs> further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Resolution passes. Resolution number 29952. Uh, yes, commissioners. Uh, this is a uh, request for a uh, what they call a outreach grant for Platte County. Uh, you might recall we had one of these on a prior board meeting agenda. Um, and then we had a uh, one of our Platte County Parks uh, Partners meeting uh, last week. And uh, there was conversation about some uh, initial needs at the Springs Aquatic Center, specifically these shade structures and lockers. And so Brian Nowadney was at the meeting and said, hey, uh, you apply for this grant, there's a good chance you'll get it. So we did it. And uh, that's what this request is. Uh, 35000 would come from the county and 35000 would come out of our sales tax funds uh, to do some shade structures. Uh, and of course, this is up at the Springs Aquatic Center along with the lockers. And so we'd ask your approval on this and um, hopefully we'll get the funds. Great. Any questions? I think, no. it's, a great, I think it's a great facility. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's fairly well self-sustaining. 
It does, yes, it is. So Yes, it is. It's good, and it's also good to get a two-for-one or at least a yeah. dollar for match, and that's to sort of maximize and that double our improvements we'll be able to make up there. Very good. Um, is there any further questions, discussion? I see none. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. A motion seconded. All those in favor, so you can probably say aye. 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 Very good. Resolution passes. Resolution number 29953. Uh, yes, Commissioner, this is a change order a request, a change order number two and final for work on the Indian Creek Blue River Confluence Trail. Uh, the vendor here is National Streetscape. You have a memo in your packet from Travis. It outlines uh, the specifics in this particular change order and uh, recommend approval. If you have any questions, uh, Travis is here. I'm talking to Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any questions at this time? None. 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 Okay. Travis is off the hook. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, I ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Motion seconded. All those in favor? Signal uh, okay. say aye. 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 Very good. Resolution passes. Resolution number 29954. Uh, yes, Commissioner, this is a bid recommendation. Uh, a little further down the agenda than it normally would be, but we've been working on this since last week. and. Uh, this is an important project. Um, Great Clyde's Community Center is one of our most highly used community centers. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's starting to show some wear and tear. Been around now for about 17 years. And uh, the restroom area, the locker room area, there again, those are all wet areas, and they tend to show the most wear and tear in the building. So we're doing a major renovation of those particular parts of the building. Uh, we took bids. Uh, the bids came in last Friday. That's great. And uh, got a quick turnaround on this. Uh, over the holiday weekend, got some good support from our folks down at HRD on the MBWB for this particular contract. And uh, funds have been kind of accumulating over a period of a few years on this from PIAC. And uh, Travis has a uh, bid recommendation for you. Uh, yes, Commissioners, just uh, one correction in the memo. There, there were actually three bids, uh, three respondents, not six, on that. As, uh, as you can see by the bid tab that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's associated with your packet up there. Mm -hmm. The recommendation is for N.W. Rogers construction uh, with the eight alternates that, that were included in their bid for a total of $607,290. Uh, Have we done work with uh, N.W. Rogers before in the past? Or they don't work for us, excuse me. They, they have done work, uh, I believe it was three or four years ago. They, they've done some work for Parks and Rec. And we that, that's my understanding. I, I believe so. I, I don't have personal okay. uh, knowledge of that, but it's my understanding that they have done work in the past. Uh, one thing that, that was encouraging when we had our pre-bid with the uh, contractors, we had indicated that this was going to be fast-tracked and to have all your... Um, uh, utilization plans and so forth ready to go because we're going to be asking for that right away and uh, sure enough they, they had their plan in by you know we opened bids at noon they had their plan in uh, early Friday afternoon and they were ready to go so very encouraging Can you explain to me the no bid on uh, alternate alternate number nine for Rogers? Uh, that that was simply they they did not have a uh, that was for replacement of the uh, grates at the pool, and they did not have a uh, bid for that. They were going to line up a specialty contractor to do that work, but due to the time frames, they they provided no bid for that item. Okay. So uh, are we then saying that on alternate nine that they are not going to perform that work? That is correct. Okay. But if I just go and look at these bid process and I say if you as general contractor had not bid that, I mean their number would essentially be I mean, you just take out that two thousand dollars. That number would, in essence, be the equivalent of that. Uh, yeah, if you're I mean, looking at if you're looking at the first one, yeah. That that two thousand for that work 
yes. after talking to that contractor, probably could not have honored that. Honored that. Okay. Because that is quite a difference between that and the 9,000 on the other side, almost 10,000 on the other side. Okay. And so we had talked about that you're awarding the base bid plus the three alternates? Eight alternates. But on here on the recommendation, it says on three alternates. That's why um, I just want to make sure that I was understanding. On the no, should, uh, should read eight. Should say that there were three bidders and that we're yeah. awarding the eight of the nine alternates. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm going down here to this sort of recommendation. Right? Okay. I just want to make sure I'm clear. On the recommendation, it was just different from what is up here on the back. Oh, oh I see where you're talking. Yes, that should be eight. Okay. I just didn't know. I said, are we taking some other ones out? No, no. Okay. No. We're taking eight of the nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nine. last paragraph needs to be corrected. So that nine piece, what was it again? Can you describe what that piece was? The, the ninth piece, when, when they initially looked at that, they thought it was going to be a matter of just replacing grates okay. in, in the pool itself, which are PVC grates yep. that lay on top. That, that's not the issue. It's actually metal. It's the metal gutter that's embedded in the concrete oh. that would have to be chiseled out and, and replaced, either saw cut, chiseled, somehow hammered out of there in, in order to replace it. So it's not it, it's not a two thousand dollar fix. Gotcha. So are right now we're just leaving that. We're we're leaving that okay. at this point. Right. It's functional, just it's. It's functional the way it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's my questions. Any other questions? Yeah. Yep. Very good. Is there a motion to approve the uh, resolution? So mm -hmm. moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been motion and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. The resolution passes. Uh, the next one, resolution number 299-455, for approval of gifts and contributions. Gifts commissioners, one gift um, for the Friends of the Fountain. Great. All right, is there a motion to accept the gift? So, so moved. Second. Right. Motion seconded. All those favors, if I say aye. 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 There you go. We got all three of us. Accepting the gift. All right, on to the next item of business, the director's report. Yes, commissioners, uh, you have in your packet um, a couple documents. One is talking about some highlights of projects completed in 2012. And uh, these are listed by month. As you can see, there's a list of projects for each of the 12 months for uh, 2012. And I'm not going to read through all these. Uh, we did place them uh, so that the items that are listed first tend to be the uh, most significant accomplishments for that particular month. For example, in January, we're talking about Penn Valley and uh, Liberty Memorial. That work started out uh, right at a year ago, and that's a little over $9 million worth of renovation work. And most of that is getting wrapped up now and will be complete uh, here in the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Of course, we've got web, web track went live at our community center. This is our online registration program. We've been kind of wanting to do that, and now we have got that in place and we've got a year of that under our belt. And then the property out east in the Little Blue Valley area off of Nolan Road, a significant piece of land, about 100 acres we purchased right at a year ago. Uh, opening of Red Bridge in, in February is significant. Uh, I think we had four or five openings before we actually completed it between the plaques and the signs and everything else. And um, that was kind of a highlight of the month of, of February. And then there's, of course, some other things listed in February. The groundbreaking for interchanges up at 169 Highway, there's two of those, one for uh, Tiffany Springs Parkway and one for uh, Shore Creek Parkway. Um, and part of the, one of those was done already. We had the actual ribbon cutting back last fall for the one at Tiffany Springs Parkway. There again mentioned Ridge Ridge Road again. Um, and then some other projects that occurred throughout the, the month of March. Uh, April we had Fountain Day uh, down at the Marlboro Fountain at 79th and Paseo. Started doing recycling uh, at several of our parks and our community centers. And then had the groundbreaking for the Shoto Traffic Way project. Um, that's the section there along the old Shoto Drive from uh, 210 up to I-35. And that's another project that will be done probably this fall sometime. That's coming along very nicely and can be a huge improvement in that part of the Northland. Um, and there again, a variety of other projects in the month of April. Looking in May, open to Truce Bridge. That's about a 10-year project to come to fruition. And that's, of course, Truce over Brush Creek, a new bridge at that location, plus new traffic signal in the intersection. And then a dedication improvement to Spring Valley Park, a complete makeover of that park over at uh, 28th and Woodland. Um, and then a couple other great things, and also in the month of May, the Penn Valley Park Skate Park with, Doug, with Rob and his group as far as uh, things were improving. And then, of course, the opening of the bay. May was a busy month. Um, the bay was, of course, a significant improvement for the new water park and Longview Track, and uh, then a variety of smaller projects throughout the, the month of May. 
uh, June, uh, debut of the mayor's uh, night kicks along with Club KC. Of course, this occurred at uh, our community centers. There was, again, this Club KC, Myers Night Kicks, Mayor's Night Nets, and uh, also the uh, uh, basketball. So it's all three programs together. Mm -hmm. And then um, the grand opening of the Blue River Trail out of 435 and Alex George, and there's another section of trail. We just did a little small change order. We'll have that opening. And I believe, are we scheduling that for Trails Day again this year? Yes. Is that right, Heidi? Um, and then the uh, naming of the Ball Diamonds over at Spring Valley for uh, Mr. Frank White. And then another very uh, important event, the uh, soccer fields at 9th and Van Brunt, the new 12-acre athletic complex at that location. Uh, looking at July, the All-Star Game. We talked a lot about that in the spring of last year, and it became a, a real project. Of course, it was highlighted throughout the nation here in Kansas City. And the real benefit to that for our system was the improvements at Satchel Page Stadium, Cleveland Park, uh, Clark Ketterman Park and the Mulkey Square Park. So we got four ball diamond complex makeovers from the efforts of Major League Baseball and the Kansas City Royals organization. And then another red bridge on there for some panels. Um, and then a variety of other activities and programs throughout the month of July. August, of course, the highlight of uh, that month and probably the highlight of the year was the uh, citizen supported questions number one and number two on the, uh, on the ballot. And, of course, question one was the half cent sales tax for parks. We opened up our second off lake dog park, of course, in Swole Park. And I think every time you go by, there's somebody there. I mean, it's just a huge success. And, uh, and then we opened up the trail over there at Daniel Morgan Boone Park in cooperation with the Native Sons of Kansas City. And that's the new trail that uh, comes off of uh, the street just to the east of the park and takes you up through the, through the woods up to the, where the Boone's uh, Hayes Cemetery site is. Started working on some smoke-free zones in our parks, and we'll be doing some follow-up on that. Um, more trails up in the Northland. So a park sign system, that's another victory for the month of August. And then there are activities besides just projects. The Ethnic Festival, of course, occurs in the month of August here in, in Swope Park, and it's going about its 30-plus years of that. Um, September, uh, we're in the Google business. We have our first hut installed at 39th and Gillum. If you've been by there recently, it's back there where the old gas pumps used to be. And, a Google Hut is basically a concrete box to put Google Fiber in. Is that kind of what that is, Travis? Um, so we're in the, you know, the Google world. And then more trails along Brush Creek. Um, that section is done. Um, Woodland on over to Lake of the Enshriners. Uh, looking at October, um, Ward Park we named one of the uh, great streets in America. I believe there's 10 that were listed. Um, Ward Park was one of those. We did the complete makeover and renovation and dedication of Sheila Camper Dietrich Park, and I know Sheila was here for that particular event. And then started construction on the Kansas City Zoo penguin exhibit, which is scheduled to be completed in October of uh, 2013. Um, and there again, a variety of and there small neighborhood projects. Uh, November, uh, I mentioned earlier about the interchange of Tiffany Spring Parkway 169 Highway. That was complete. Uh, the next one in Shore Creek Parkway, which is about a mile and a half north, uh, that will scheduled to be dedicated in November of 2013 um, and started doing some work on the Paseo Bridge over Brush Creek, minor tennis court complex, lighting, and there again some more uh, small projects. Uh, December, uh, crosswalks on 12th Street up in the area where Gates' headquarters is. We've got a FEMA grant for Garrison Community Center and then a variety of other uh, hmm. small improvements. So that's kind of a quick summary of, of 12 months. Um, Heidi, as she's done in the past several years, will take this information along with some great photos and incorporate it in our annual review. Uh, we'll list our partners as we've done in the past, which is up to a couple hundred now, and we'll have some statistics in there on a variety of things that we keep crunch numbers on. Um, and I know she's working on that. I think her deadline to get all our information is around the 1st of February, and she'll have that into production and have it out in... In February. Okay. <laughs> that'll summarize it. Very good. Um, any questions? I just want to say what, you know, what an impressive year, and thank you for pulling the information together. I, uh, it would be good for us, if, if all possible, I, I find, even though I sit on this board and I go back and look at everything, mm -hmm. you know, some of the stuff sort of gets about past us, right? And you just sort of, mm -hmm. you know, you tend to forget of all the things that we have. Mm -hmm accomplished in this year as a department for the city, for the residents. And I wonder if, granted, wait until February 1st and then get something out later in February, 
Great. Well, take this information, especially as we're talking budget right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And we, as commissioners, can send this out and sure. to our our councils, uh, council uh, men and women, and say, look, here are the ones that are in your mm -hmm. respective di yeah. districts. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the things that we were able to do, just to remind them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it might be worthwhile if you know, we can come just say which ones are in. Yeah, we could do it. Council we districts, and we're happy to sort of send a note out to each mm -hmm. and every one of them, and specifically thank them for their PIAC contributions that okay. have aided us in doing them in their districts. Yeah, we that could, recognition uh, along with the. Yeah, we could add the uh, add the council district to all of these. Yep, mm -hmm. so. that would be very helpful. And, yeah. In general, those, those have, uh, that have attended the PIAC meetings and the updates that we have with the council representatives, that that's in fact what does happen at those meetings and. And uh, we'll go through a list and and of projects, not only the ones that have been completed, but ones that have been started and that sort of thing. To give them a status of basically great. what they've done with their money over the past year. So, well, great. Yeah, and, we'll, uh, and I think you know, sure. and I, I and I appreciate staff doing that. It's a little when it kind of comes a little bit from us, sure, and handwritten sort of note as well. We're happy just to reinforce that message that you all do as staff as well. Very good. Thank great. you. The next document, and uh, Travis can kind of stay up there. Uh, he's probably going to have as many of anybody on this list. It's not just Travis. It's all Mark Boland is here, and Forge Decker is here, and Heidi's here, and Sherry's here. So I think collectively we're all going to be looking at these. And this was a, uh, a list of 2013 and beyond. I say beyond. Some of this will get done in 2013. Some of it might be 2014. Uh, but it's um, uh, in process is another way to say that. Um, and this list could probably be added to a matter of fact I've made a couple of notes as I said oh, uh, but just to kind of quickly go through this um, Phil the director, director position of course that's Steve's position since his retirement uh, the uh, PR marketing website consultant Heidi you've already got that one done right oh yes okay uh, you're working on implementation the next one would uh, the uh, recreation division assessment took proposals on that and now there's a committee working on that with Mark Boland and myself and Sherry and uh, Board President uh, Jean-Paul Charon and Contract Administrator um, Denise Phillips. And we've got proposals. I think we've got interviews coming up next week, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, Mobile Street-based, we just proved that one, right? Okay. Uh, NRPA accreditation, um, Sharon Estrada, who's our new employee in our administrative officer position, is taking the lead on that, and that's everybody working on that. Uh, the team will be here to assess us sometime this fall, so we've got a lot of work to do in the next 10 months on NRP accreditation. Uh, budget, capital, and operating, of course, Sherry gave you a good overview of that uh, in the free board, and that's an ongoing process. We've got some schedules on that, and of course, that's actually a 12-month operation. Uh, First and Second Creek, I know that's a project the commissioners uh, Mecklenburg and Dillingham have a strong focus on. I think we're making some headway on that. Uh, we had a meeting. Uh, last week with the city manager and the director of the water services, the uh, public works and the city planning department and we're looking at some proposals on that and uh, that's a huge project for us. Um, first and Second Creek watershed master plan and it, there again I say a master plan is the best way to describe it. Uh, the Winchester TIF, and a lot in the press on that. Uh, I believe to the best of my knowledge the mayor has now worked out an arrangement on that. Yep. And, uh, I think so. so I think we're heading in the right direction on that. And of course, the impact on that is for uh, the soccer fields here in Swart Park. That's how it affects us directly. Uh, North Lane Community Center Market Study. Um, Steve Abbott on Travis's shop has been working on that. Uh, we've got proposals. I know Commissioner Dillingham is part of that review process along with uh, Commissioner, who is it? Uh, well, Scott Wagner's Scott doing Wagner. it, right, from the City Council. Him and Dick Davis have both been involved. Looks like around the 25th mm -hmm. is when uh, we'll have those meetings. So. Right. And this is to look at the feasibility of a uh, new community center in the north part of the city, either at Pleasant Valley or Gar and Garney Park. Uh, Little Memorial Building and Grounds, um, there again, we had that on the agenda earlier in relationship to that's, of course, the committee that Dave Mecklenburg chairs for the Little Memorial and to move forward on all those necessary repairs. Uh, ADS assessments to our facilities. Uh, Mark Bowen's taking the lead on this one, uh, working with Meg Conger out of City Hall. Uh, to assessments of all of our facilities. You might recall we had an audit done by the Department of Justice that uh, pointed out a lot of issues that we need to address for accommodations and accessibility in our buildings. And this is not just parks, it's citywide in general, and we're working on that. And I know a lot of those assessments are already taking place. Security assessments in our parks, uh, this is something Forrest is working on with uh, Councilman mm -hmm. Scott Wagner. I think you've done about four or five locations now. Four, we're going to do that. Right. Yeah. And I know. Uh, Councilman Wagner was at a prior board meeting talking about that. He'll be back sometime 
this spring to give us an update. Early February, second week of February, first of March. Right. Uh, we went out with an RFP and selected a local firm to do a uh, study and put uh, the Park and Boulevard system mm -hmm. on the National Register. Uh, Sid Milstein is the lead yep. of that firm. Yep. Uh, Ann McFerrin, our archivist, right. is the project manager on that, working with Travis and Shop, um, and that's in process. Um, and I think the timeline on that, Travis? Well, the next uh, next meeting, she's got another meeting mm -hmm. uh, next week on that. So, right. yeah, they, they've been having regular pros, uh, progress meetings, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of this initial portion of it has been the data gathering. So, uh, gold medal award, uh, working on that again. You know, we almost made it a couple years ago. Last year we were doing other things, and so we're going to go back at it. Uh, we've got a committee working on that. Uh, Tammy Tritico, uh, Forrest Decker. And Heidi are working on that as a committee, and uh, I think we've got a March time frame on that, I believe, to get that submitted. Yep. So uh, that's... And we've, and we've had several nice recognitions since the last time we did it that will probably mm -hmm. help our standing, I think, yeah. with uh, great streets and, mm -hmm. and all of the things that we've got going. So What another Fantastic. positive, uh, you know, really stellar article from the Kansas City Star help it all? In any sure. Of that? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Well, I don't think it can be discounted <laughs> that we were able to negotiate and get the support of our community with a half cent dedicated that's sales tax. Yeah. And I think that's got to be a yes. very strong sure. sales point right. for making this parks department mm -hmm. an award winner. Yep. Yeah. I would agree. I hope so. uh, yes. The next one on there is uh, healthy foods in our facilities. I know Commissioner Bryant's taken some interest in that. Uh, we had a short presentation from uh, Councilman Sharp on that. and. Uh, I know that uh, from the staff level, uh, Carmen is working on that particular initiative. The smoke-free parks, we have test locations, and we're going to, uh, those have all been pretty successful from what we've learned, and we're going to look at some more locations for that, and Forrest is working on that, and uh, we're bringing something to you on that as far as additional smoke-free parks. Working, of course, with the health department on that at the same time. Correct. Grant, they have to Right. The water Wastewater storage tunnels under Swope Park. You might remember that issue uh, brought from Terry Leeds and Water Services. Um, I asked him where we stand on that, and he says we'll be getting back to you. So I'm That's not sure right. where we stand on that. We'll find out, I guess. If you recall, there, there were two alternatives. The other one was down at 87th Street for above ground storage tanks, and mm -hmm. that obviously mm -hmm. had some issues and mm -hmm. with the neighbors as mm -hmm. well. So, yeah. And the zoo, of course, had some concerns, some concerns about this, right? right? So that's kind of a stay tuned. Uh, water fire event management, we've talked about that a little bit. Um, <coughs> it's kind of a question yet to be answered. Um, of course, talked to Karen Holland on that, and I think there's been some email traffic on that, and so that's a decision that will have to be made sometime. Uh, Mayor's Summer Nights program we talked about earlier, and Mark Bowen, of course, taking the lead on that, working with the, uh, the mayor and his staff. That was talked to again about at KC staff this morning, and looking forward to another great, uh, great summer program activities for our youth. Firefighters Fountain and Art and Inclination, we uh, are working closely with uh, the City of Founds Foundation along with the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department on that and the Municipal Art Commission. They actually have a meeting coming on that. I think it's even tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Porter O'Neill and his staff. Yeah, and with the artist. And the yeah, the artist. Yeah, tomorrow, right? artist and, yeah, Barbara Gutierrez, I believe is her name, and she's from Tucson, if I recall. And uh, so anyway, that's a project that's uh, getting its Go, it's going forward. And the, I know the board did approve a contract with Barbara mm -hmm. uh, back last fall. On the next page, Town Center Development. This is Show Creek Valley area. This is an area of interest to Councilman Dick Davis. And uh, Travis and I have been working on that. This ties into the Show Creek TIF and a new piece of the development within that area. Um, intersection improvements and independence for sale. We've mentioned this on a couple occasions. And, um, I know we've uh, been working with the city manager's office on this. This is up there in Independence for Sale where the motels are, mm -hmm. where the KCUMB and the Housing Authority, and another one is Steve Abbott's projects. That's correct. Um, Waterworks Park Master Plan. Uh, this kind of is a spin out of our Briarcliff Trails project. Um, got a piece of the trails down. There's another section of the trails that we kind of stepped back on for a little while. We had a good meeting before the first of the year on the Waterworks Park Master Plan. <coughs> Commissioners Mecklenburg and Dillingham are both there. Richard Allen's our project manager on this. And I mentioned a little earlier about the council folks being there. We have a plan we're going to reschedule that group uh, in February and show that master plan for Waterworks Park. And then, of course, the dog park ties into that, too, just down the street. Um, the Bank of America loan for the Northland Sports Alliance and Tiffany Hills kind of hangs out there still. Okay. Not sure if we have a resolve on it. It's been a while. 
Uh, the Skywalk Memorial had a presentation from the committee on that. The site there, the board uh, uh, looked at the new design and liked the design. Now it's just a matter of raising the money to make it happen. Uh, the City Founds Foundation has a fundraising committee. We talked about that a little earlier. Uh, kind of get their feet on the ground, get moving forward to raise some funds privately to go along with uh, what happens uh, from the public funds to, uh, and we have a lot of fountains that need work done. I think we identify about eight of them that are really in kind of rough shape. Um, I know we're going to be talking to the Kansas City Star about that also. Uh, the chair of this committee or one of the co-chairs is Anita Gorman. She's had some conversations with Miriam Pepper on this, Lynn, about maybe getting some support from the Kansas City Star on that, and she's handling that particular thing, Lynn. Um, the uh, improvements of the bay, I uh, understand Councilman Sharp would like to put some more money into the bay uh, through his neighbor allocation. If he does, in fact, do that, we're going to be able to add a few more items out there. Mm -hmm. um, that's forthcoming, hopefully. Uh, the Platte County Sports Commission, we mentioned briefly one time, this is a coordinated effort between uh, Platte yes. County and Casey Parks to kind of consolidate all these organizations. And um, I know that there's a resolution that was passed by the Platte County Commission back in December. They've had some leadership changes in the commission, and I know Brian, the director, would like to move forward, so we can no rush on that one, but we usually talk about it sometimes. It's out there to be dealt with. It's, a, it's another one of those one-stop shop mm -hmm. situations, like mm -hmm. with the race directors, right. uh, to make it easier for the athletic teams mm -hmm. and leagues to coordinate their practice schedules and their league schedules, mm -hmm. uh, making things a little more seamless. So that's out there. Uh, so far, greenhouse, we need to restore our greenhouse. Um, and I know Forge is working on that along with Heather Runkle from Travis's shop. Um, I confirmed again the Starlight folks want to participate in that forest. So they have a place to store their plant materials in, in the winter months. And so we, we get forward and we do in our greenhouse here in Swope Park. Um, right now, we're trying to get uh, beer sales at Lime Creek Community Center. Uh, had an issue we need to work out with regulated industry. I know Mark is working with uh, make. And Dan Smith, is that correct on that? Right. Trying to get that back on, uh, deal with it, as far as at that community center for revenue enhancement and uh, for the use of our spectators, primarily the hockey, hockey players, after they play hockey. <laughs> um, <laughs> Whole Foods along Brookside Boulevard is an item we've been dealing with. This is an old Whole Foods, which is a great idea. Our issue there is about how it inf interfaces with Brookside Boulevard. And I know that's, has that come to plan? <coughs> Not yet. But so yeah, they, they haven't formally submitted a okay. revised having plan. conversations so. with the developer and the architect on that. That's correct. One item I just added to this is commuter rail. I know you've been working with the folks from Jackson County on that. That's right. In fact, there's a meeting uh, tomorrow night okay. again on that. So mm -hmm. uh, they're uh, continuing to meet to talk about the uh, ra rails and trails issue, trying to tie the two together to uh, garner more public support for that uh, system. So. A um, couple other items, Mark, right, was the uh, Independence and Benton Boulevard yes. uh, uh, construction project uh, should should kick off here in 2013. Uh, ongoing uh, repairs uh, requested by the Corps of Engineers down along our Brush Creek uh, uh, area, <coughs> and then we we've also uh, started a series of. Uh, MOUs and coordination meetings with other departments, with Public Works, uh, City Planning Development, Water Services. Public Works, uh, that MOU's been in place for a little bit now, and uh, so we're, we're trying to take that same tack with uh, City Planning Development, Water Services, as far as coordinating um, permit projects, uh, making sure that each department's aware of what, what the other one's doing, and, and, uh, and also uh, streamlining the process a little bit. That's great. Uh, one, one of the things uh, from this morning's meeting that, that also will impact what goes on in 2010 is this uh, Mayor's Task Force yeah. on, on the Arts. There's going to be a series of meetings starting January 28th is the kickoff meeting at 6.30 at the uh, Art Tech, that's 1522 Home Street. And then from uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the 29th, 30th, and 31st, uh, there'll be meetings at several of our community centers, and I'll give this to Heidi so uh, we we'll get this on the website. And, okay. and, uh, Questions? Commissioner, any of these things that are, you know, uh, out I, there I for think something we probably ought to put on for 2013 is, is uh, communication with the Arts Commission okay. on the use of park facilities for enhancing uh, some of the, art, the arts 
things they're trying to organize. Uh, in the meeting this morning, uh, I was thinking of the uh, uh, Hodge Park uh, amphitheater, amphitheater yeah. which is unused, and I asked them for their assistance. Uh, anytime we can get a facility that's as nice as that, with more use, the, the better off we're going to be. And uh, so I think that's something we would want to have okay. a little more correspondence and presentation by them before the Parks Board sometime in the near future. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Good. Mark, thank you and yeah. to your staff for putting Great this job. together. Mm -hmm. Very, very helpful. Thank you. And the good thing is, I'd say, especially on what's coming up, yeah. I mean, we're pretty well abreast yeah. of everything, and you've kept us in the loop on, on all of that. So thank you. Thank you. Good. Well, we look forward to Thanks for your leadership and your help on this. Well, uh, pleasure. Looking forward to 2013. Yes. Uh, a couple other items. Um, uh, Mark Bullen uh, has prepared a memo. I'm going to give this to you for your review, and this is not an action item, but uh, looking at some uh, small revenue uh, potential increases with the fees and charges okay. associated with uh, community centers. So please take this with you, and this will be discussed at a, at a later time. Okay, great. Is there one there for Amy, I believe? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, Forge is here, um, and I was just reading the article in the uh, Northeast News on the, uh, the homeless camps. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, Forrest. I can give you a brief update. Uh, <clears throat> on Friday of last week, we, uh, in cooperation with the police department and their meth task force and uh, Faith Hope Ministries and City Union Mission, went into a, a pretty large transient camp in Kessler Park, kind of right at the end of Paseo, where the off-ramp comes on the interstate, those woods right up there to the east. Um, we came in after the other entities and basically cleaned everything up and took all, all the tents, the shanties, the, the garbage, you know, everything like that. But How many truckloads? We took out eight dump truckloads of stuff. Eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. How yeah, many meth labs? There was a lot. There were, uh, well, they weren't really, a, I guess, what you would call a lab, like you would think of a lab, but there were uh, five different locations in there where there were cooking meth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do it in a pop bottle now. They don't even have to have a lab set up. So, And it was amazing to me how close to the ramp that was, and you never knew it was there. <clears throat> there was so much honeysuckle along yeah. there, it was kind of screening it. So, I went by in the morning mm -hmm. before it was cut down, and then I went by in the <clears throat> afternoon and, and saw the difference in the cleared out area. And it was a yeah, we cleared a lot of the honeysuckle out of there just to try to discourage that, and we'll right. be doing more of that in the, in the coming weeks. But anyway, Travis, the city manager is going to do that task force. Going to have that task force on the on the transient issue. Just so you're all aware. Anything else in construction, Travis? Nothing else. Okay. And then Heidi on marketing. Well, as you know, um, we are moving past and furiously on the rebranding yes, with great. an aggressive timeline. So that's pretty much what uh, we're up to right now. We've already had three uh, marketing strategy sessions with the uh, Cre Brockton Creative Group and Will Gregory PR, um, one of which was attended by about 20 staff members. So I wanted to thank everyone who came to that for their input on um, the rebranding and the redesign of the website particularly. Uh, we've emailed out the survey. And this year we did it differently. We're doing it more as a marketing piece, trying to figure out how to best communicate with our public. And have already received 575 responses, which is the most oh. ever. <laughs> so I'm very excited. That will that runs through the end of the week. And then we will, of course, and we have been all along during these sessions using the what we're getting back on the surveys um, for input into this effort. As you know, then we've... Uh, are contracting now with Eve Energy and we'll be meeting with them on a regular basis every two weeks to kind of work through this process of developing the race coordinator and making it flow seamlessly. Um, and just for the public's information, to rem remind them that in January and February you can get two free admission tickets to the National World War I Museum. Um, some things looking ahead that we're working on as well would be the Flower Lawn and Garden Show in March. Been meeting with uh, Forest Group, as well as the Home Builders Association on that, and that is March the 22nd through the 24th. We did at the last meeting, I believe, uh, confirm that, or we are confirming, I guess, now that Fountain Day will take place at the uh, Children's Fountain on April the 9th, and we're going to try to make a bigger, better deal out of that this year as well, working with uh, some more PR on that event. And then it just goes from there. 
So. When, at what time are the meetings on 8th, the 22nd, 24th, and 25th? Um, the next one is Thursday at 1 o'clock. And the following one is Friday, and I believe it's at 1 o'clock as well. On Thursday, we're going to be working on um, the website and the d way we are going to lay out the new website, some of the details on that. And then Friday, I'm not quite sure what we're talking about there, but I can let you know if you're interested in showing up. And you said up. they were going to call us? Yeah, they're going, going to <laughs> contact you guys once we kind of accumulate some more data and do some um, discovery, I guess. Um, to get your input and ideas and yeah, feelings. I would so. say the same. I mean, I'm happy to sort of participate, but you might want to kind of wait to let some of the stuff sort of. It's, it's kind of like me and staff, yeah, or yeah. other staff kind members really sitting with the that. guys. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's really just really um, exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just a lot of drilling of, down of information and where things are and how we work as now as a, as a department, you're welcome to but definitely to come though. Yes, yeah. yeah. When we get to that point, I'm definitely going to get your input and your buy-in. Um, but like I said, they still will be contacting you with some questions. Um, we're, right now, we're just doing a really in-depth kind of figuring out what we, where we stand and what, where we want to head and what direction a little bit. And they'll need your input more on that. But definitely, like when we get some ideas, <laughs> we're going to throw some, bounce some off of you. Great. That's all I have. Do we have any public hearing? No. Okay. Um, and then uh, just kind of looking at the rest of the calendar here, uh, our next board meeting is here on the on the 5th. And Davies, you are? I won't be here. I'll be just sitting. Okay. okay. And, um, and then just continue to look at the month of February, the Pike County Parks Partners on the 13th. Um, back on the 19th for a board meeting. There's another holiday. And, Class um, board meeting. MPRA is that latter part of February also. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Anything else for the Google order? All right. Hearing none, meeting adjourned. Yeah, no, I think that's good for you. If you want to sign something,